Over two years ago, you guys moved from more traditional type of focus on television commercials, and you moved over to mobile first and that format. I'm really curious how you persuaded your clients to actually get on board with that with you. It mainly uh, revolved around showing them the data, why it mattered, how the consumer behavior was shifting towards feed rather than kind of long form TV based content, but also testing, so running versions of creative in market showing which one works best in it. It always worked in our favor. So how long did it take you to get them to realize this? It's an ongoing process that continues to this day. Mm -hmm. I think you basically summarized our jobs very well. We wake up in the morning and try to convince advertisers and other agencies to see the world through a mobile lens and not through a broadcast lens. It's very difficult to do because a lot of these habits are very deeply ingrained. So really I feel like the industry needs to be deprogrammed from its uh, broadcast roots and start to realize that if you're, if you're selling to a, a customer under 40, you're probably going to make the connection with them through mobile and not through broadcast. So I know you guys have an example that you were going to share with us. I think it was Questrade. So I'd love to have you tell me a little bit more about how it is that you approached them and how they worked with you and what the challenges were. Well, when we came to Questrade, they already had 15-second broadcast ads. They were pretty good. Um, and with them, it was about, would you let us cut them into vertical and, and run them? Yeah. As a test, we cut their ads into a shorter vertical version and ran them, and they did really well. It sounds like they were probably pretty receptive from the get-go. Is that accurate? I think it took a little, it took a little explaining time. and yeah. some time. Um, but once we can deliver data and show the results, then it's an easier conversation the second time. Showing them was key. Actually making a spec version that, and showing them on a cell phone. There was no competition. It looked like with the vertical video that you're FaceTiming someone. It takes up 110% of the screen. The full screen doesn't cost any more to run it. Like yeah. it was, it's a no-brainer. Okay. But what we see a lot happening is that as soon as broadcast television leads the creative strategy, social and mobile are going to be an afterthought. And that's a problem. So we, you know, we just tell clients that they need to think about it mobile first. They can still do broadcast TV, but broadcast TV creative shouldn't be driving the creative strategy 2019 forward. So you want them both in parallel in terms of what they're thinking about when they're coming up with their strategy? In parallel or leverage Facebook as a precursor as well. So we have a saying at Abacus that the, the, the audience is now the creative director. So mm -hmm. instead of just coming up with one amazing idea, what you can do is run you know, a thousand different ideas test them all, see which one resonates with your audience, and then invest in TV production budget and spend millions and on millions oh, so on, on the creative. so interesting, using it more as a testing yeah. strategy first so that it informs broadcast. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a cool thought. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that it takes a little bit of persuasion to get new clients on up to speed on what it's all about so that they're, you know, cooperative and willing. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you do it. What's your strategy? I mean, we talk a lot about consumer behavior and feed-informed storytelling. If you think about traditional commercials, they kind of follow this trajectory of up and to the right. Mm -hmm. You introduce a, a story, then you slowly arc up to the eventual reveal of the, the broadcast kind of messaging. Whereas feed-informed storytelling is the opposite. It starts up high, you come in with branding and messaging, and then drop down to a tail. Key is to um, capture people's attention in the first second, let them know what's in it for them within you know, two to three seconds, and then kind of arc off to the rest of the, the, rest of the stories. We have a rule we call 158. It's like a second. In the first second, you should show like who you are and what you do. In, in the first five, you basically tell your entire story. And by eight, a eight, eight second mark, assume that most people are gone. And if you overlay that against the traditional 30 okay. second broadcast storytelling, you'll see that like 90% of the people are missing your main message. Mm -hmm. And 158 is sort of like a way that we could look at any piece of creative and, and give it a test. After a second, you know who it is and what it's about. After five, do you have a pretty good idea what they're trying to tell you? And it becomes like a good litmus test for okay. mobile advertising. And that's, that's what we try and do. We try and take their creative and say, will this work within this constrained environment? And another point is the sound. Like Most people don't have their sound on in the feed. So when we're designing creative, we try and say, you know, design for sound off, delight with sound on. You need to be able to build creative that works within a sound off environment, but then adds an extra element if they do turn the sound on. If you had advice for agencies just starting out, what would that be? You've got to lead with data. You know, whether they uh, existing data or taking their creative and actually showing them what works and what doesn't. Thank you both so much for coming in and talking to us at Facebook. We really appreciate it. I think we've all learned a lot today. Thank you. Thanks.